So you've probably seen car theft in movies, say like, like Gone in 60 Seconds. Car thieves insert a Slim Jim into the car's door, unlock it, and then hotwire the car and slip away into the night. Well, these methods are obsolete. As cars have become more computerized, they now have engine immobilizers, tracking solutions, security software, security hardware, and other anti-theft mechanisms. But car theft has exploded with new keyless hacking tactics. So car companies began shipping keyless entry features back in 2015, and the UK-based vehicle recovery company Tracker collects monthly data on car thefts. They showed that in July 2023, keyless car theft reached an all-time high in the UK, accounting for 98% of stolen vehicles that the company helped recover. So car thieves are using a few different methods ranging from low sophistication signals attacks to more high sophistication hardware and software exploits. And as more computerized and electric vehicles are being shipped, new car theft tactics are on the rise. Let's break them down and possible security mitigations. So by far the most common and simple are relay attacks. So these are pretty simple. So most modern cars come with keyless entry and electronic engine immobilizers. The engine immobilizer is essentially meant to prevent hot wiring, which is basically just rewiring the car to circumvent the key ignition switch that connects the circuit and starts the car. A good recent example of hot wiring is the Kia Boys Challenge, which was done by hot wiring cheap Kias and Hyundais that did not include engine immobilizers. So keyless entry systems use key fobs that constantly transmit an RFID signal which has a range of up to 20 meters. To be more specific, they usually use RFID signals that operate around the Federal Communications Commission's prescribed 315 megahertz. So when the key fob gets within range, a sensor in the car picks it up and unlocks the car and switches off the engine immobilizer. So let's look at this footage of a recent 2023 relay attack in the UK. Thieves basically use two devices to extend the key fob's range. So one device is placed within 20 meters of the key fob, which we presume to be somewhere inside the owner's home, probably near the garage. This device captures a signal and then acts as a relay to transmit to the second device that's near the car, which then broadcasts that signal to the car, which tricks the vehicle into thinking that the key fob is close by and disables the engine immobilizer. So this is done with a software-defined radio, which can be bought online for as little as $100. Some of the more advanced ones will actually amplify the signal and bring it back to the original strength of the key fob. And also, so once the car is started, it won't stop when it no longer detects the key fob. As you can probably imagine, that's done for practical and safety reasons. If the key fob's battery dies, it would create huge problems, especially say if you're like driving on the highway or somewhere remote. And also the thieves usually record the key fob signal while they're relaying it and then use reprogrammable key fobs and then reprogram them with the original key fob signal, essentially cloning that key fob. But what about if there is a remote key that clicks to unlock? So this can add another layer of security. In this case, the key fob spoof signal will only be able to disable the engine immobilizer. So every time you click a remote key, a one-time rolling code is broadcasted. And this works similar to how TOTP works for MFA. The car and the remote key are synced with the same algorithm, so you must have the correct code. Okay, OTP or one-time password would be a better example, since those codes aren't always changing. Regardless, there's a vulnerability. And the vulnerability comes from the fact that the one-time code must be received by the car's computer in order for it to update its spot in the sequence of one-time codes. So criminals can place a small device somewhere near the car. So when the owner clicks the key, the device will jam the signal for the car while recording it. Since the car fails to unlock, the owner will need to click the key one more time. Since there is a specific order required, the device records the second code and sends the first intercepted code to the car. If necessary, more than one code can be blocked and recorded. And the stored codes can then be used later to unlock the car. And if it has remote start capability, start the engine as well. So the more conventional protection from relay attacks are Faraday cages and Faraday pouches, which basically block the key fob signal. But a handful of manufacturers are also introducing motion tags, which basically puts the key fob into sleep mode when it's left sitting for a while. Another interesting one is some manufacturers are replacing the standard RFID with ultra-wideband. Ultra-wideband is known for its high accuracy and measuring distance, so this could make it more difficult for relay attacks to trick the system. But, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of the higher-end software-defined radios have amplification capabilities, which still seems capable of beating ultra-wideband. Now here comes the more sophisticated hacks. These have hacked the vehicle's internal computer network called the CAN bus. The CAN bus was invented over 30 years ago and is used in most cars today. CAN stands for Controller Area Network, and the CAN bus is the auto industry term used to describe the message-based electronic system that allows various components of the car to communicate with one another. In April 2022, Toyota RAV4s were stolen by a hack in the CAN bus. Interestingly enough, it began at the car's headlight module. 
Thieves likely chose this point because it was the easiest way to get hooked into the vehicle's CAN bus system without having to get inside the car first. Part of the onboard diagnostics monitors the lights, and when the light's electronic control unit detects a default, it records a code and sends a message via the CAN bus. So since messages can be sent from the headlights, Thieves connected a device to the headlight CAN port to inject fake messages into the car's CAN bus. First, they sent override messages that blocked other CAN messages and also blocked the security mechanism's logic that detects and stops spoof messages. Now, obviously, that's an oversimplification of the first part of the exploit. So then they sent messages, spoofing messages, that come from the car's RFID sensor, which it sends when it detects the key fob signal, allowing thieves to unlock the doors and disable the engine immobilizer without the actual key fob. So this attack was a particularly sophisticated injection exploit, which obviously took deep knowledge of the car. So maybe it was done by organized crime that obtained information from a Toyota data breach on the dark web, or maybe it was done at least in part by a Toyota insider. We just don't know. Once inside the car, thieves can connect a diagnostics device to the onboard diagnostics port inside the car to reprogram a key fob for the car. This is usually done with an iPad like the ones you see mechanics use at the dealership, and there's really no authentication or access controls to this port that's inside the car. So CAN security is very similar to traditional network security, with the exception that there's limited memory, storage, and compute due to physical space restrictions. And usually physical access is required to hack the car, but not always as you'll see shortly. But like traditional network security, authentication, access management, segmentation, firewall, and other security controls are used to harden security. Teslas rarely got stolen due to their native always-on advanced GPS tracking functionality and native internet connectivity. Typically after thieves steal cars, they'll quickly remove the independent but battery-connected GPS tracking device, which are usually in the same places. But with Teslas and newer vehicles, especially electric vehicles, it's more complicated since GPS isn't a device, but a function of the computer, similar to how your cell phone has GPS. Although thieves have found a way to circumvent this too, as we've seen Teslas stolen that were never recovered. After a relay attack to gain entry, thieves likely removed the SIM card, used a GPS blocker to prevent tracking, and or spoofed it with inaccurate GPS signals, as GPS is a low-powered signal that's unencrypted and without digital signatures, so it's very vulnerable to spoofing. It's also possible to exploit a software or hardware vulnerability to disable GPS. Although Teslas are still a tough target, so most stolen Teslas are typically chopped up for parts instead of shipped away and sold in other countries. So what's becoming apparent is that more and more vehicles, especially electric vehicles like Teslas, are very much computerized IoT devices that have their own SIM card. So the CAN buses are accessible through either a cellular or a SATCOM connection. So this allows for mobile app integration, and EV manufacturers use telematic systems to provide remote services, collect data, and monitor vehicle performance. Some EV manufacturers even provide over-the-air updates to their software. And some automakers are even weighing a phone-based key. All of these factors make for a massive attack surface. And the CAN messages can do things like disable alarms, unlock doors, and even start the engine. In 2022, a 19-year-old security researcher used Teslamate, a third-party app, to successfully hack into 25 Teslas in more than a dozen countries. So more mobile devices of car owners will likely be targeted to steal cars individually, and application vulnerabilities in production and in the supply chain will likely be exploited to steal cars in a more systemic fashion. So we'll likely start seeing more advanced exploits similar to traditional cyber attacks, but for car theft. Once the cars are stolen, we'll likely see them being jailbroken to disable the native tracking and recovery functions before swapping the SIM cards. This is obviously much more sophisticated and will likely be done by more capable cyber criminal organizations that use local mules to facilitate the car theft.